and get into our first game of this series between Heriberto and Javier. All right, I can't wait to see the leads. Yeah, like I'm. That's what I'm super excited about because you mentioned maybe leaving that weather in the back, and you can kind of see Kingdra and Excadrill hitting the field, which would benefit from the weather from both of those partners. Yeah, exactly. So you know, kind of don't want to set the weather immediately because your opponent can always just take advantage and sw uh, switch in their weather user. So Amoongus right now provides a lot of disruption, uh, especially if it's carrying the Koba Berry, which is very often used on it, uh, because it means even if the Kingdra Dynamaxes and goes for a max Airstream onto Amoongus, Amoongus should be able to get a Spore off in this turn. So Excadrill is actually opting to Dynamax here, and you could you know go for a Steel Spike into Clefairy. Javier might predict that, go into La Politoed, and so by going for the Max Quake, you at least get a special defense boost. If Excadrill has that Focus Sash, then it'll be able to even survive any water type attack from the Kingdra. But I think the lead favors uh, Ariberto a bit just because the Amoongus puts on a lot of pressure with a early Spore. Well, here's that weather coming into play as that Drizzle becomes a, an active part of the battlefield. And now this Kingdra should be able to fire off some really effective water type attacks at this Excadrill. But Excadrill going to Dynamax first as we got a chance to see Eriberto select during that preview. And now the kind of question is whether or not Javier called it correctly. Alright, let's see. Kingdra is not maxing here. Did it go for a Muddy Water? Oh, it's just a Protect. A Muddy Water there would have been absolutely huge, especially with the rain being up. Yeah, that would have been huge, but here comes a Rage Powder just to try to draw away some of that attention from this Excadrill. So no Muddy Water coming through. This is a really free turn for Edoberto to get off big damage and Politoed. That would have been uh, the Clefairy taking that one. Yeah, so Eriberto gets so much out of this turn, you know, you don't end up going for a Steel Spike, end up going for a Max Quick instead, and Politoed is now in KO range from another one. You also get that special defense boost, and you force the Polydo to switch out, so Amoongus potentially has the option to say switch into Tyranitar right now. You might be a little bit wary of, you know, really strong Muddy Water coming off, but, you know, if Exodrill has that Focus Sash and you can knock out that Politoed, then you'll have weather control uh, for the remainder of the game. And I think mainly what's really big right now for Amoongus is, once again, the potential to just go for something like a Spore. Uh, I think going for a Max Quig on a Politoed and just Sporing into Kingdra feels like a super, super safe play right now. And once again, that's why mm -hmm. I have to ask, how does Javier actually deal with the Sleeps? Yeah, the sleeps are going to be a bit of a problem, but Kingdra is so fast, gets a chance to move first, but Excadrill hangs on. So that even though that was a huge critical hit and a huge amount of damage coming through, Excadrill still gets a chance to fire off another attack. So Eriberto using that Max Quake, going to be able to do the last bit of damage to knock out this Politoed. And just for those of you that are watching, players do submit their own matches, and this one happens to be just a little choppy, but it's a match we really wanted to show you this week. Alright, let's see. There was the accuracy drop on Amoongus, but it is able to connect on the Spore, and that's absolutely huge. So, Kingdra is able to get a really powerful attack off with that Muddy Water boosted by the Helping Hand, but Excadrill, after getting that initial special defense boost, able to survive, doesn't bring it down to a potential Focus Sash. So, I, uh, you know early pressure coming out from Eriberto, but Javier hasn't Dynamaxed or Gigantamaxed yet, so that could be what he's going for, right? Conserve the Dynamax and save it for the late game. Mm -hmm. Now, with Kingdra guaranteed to stay asleep for this subsequent turn, Exodrill's, you know, going to be able to get another attack off before its max ends. Uh, of course, Amoongus here could put on pressure against Urshifu with the Spore, but if you're expecting just Urshifu to go for an attack to knock out the Amoongus, especially if it's a dark type attack, then you can go for the Tyranitar switch in which Eriberto is going for. Uh, that not only allows you to change the weather, also allows you to get some damage off with the Excadrill uh, and conserve the Amoongus, of course, with Regenerator as well, allow the Amoongus to heal back a little bit. So I think Javier at this point really has to go for the Gigantamax on the Urshifu, and you really have to get a lot out of these next three turns with the Gigantamax. Yeah, but, well, here's where the weather control comes into play. Now that Politoed is out of the mix, this Tyranitar can come in and freely set up the sand. But th you mentioned that Javier had held on to that Dynamax or Gigantamax factor, so it is going to come through now, and I expect that it is going to be the Urshifu that is going to be getting that <laughs> factor. And, oh my goodness. All right, let's see whether it maybe predicted the Tyranitar switch and it went for a Max Knuckle instead. Excadrill will get a Max Steel Spike off before anything, so notably giving uh, defense boost to both of these Pokemon. 
uh, which means maybe a Tyranitar can actually survive a Max Knuckle if it's going into <laughs> that slot. Uh, Kingdra helps to stay in, so it will, you know, take a turn of sleep here, which is important because you want it to wake up in this late game. But it's not a Max Knuckle. It's going to be the signature G-Max attack going into Tyranitar, so doesn't do very much damage there. Uh, Max Knuckle there not only would have been super effective, but also would have gotten the attack increase. However, hard to really, you know, go for a Max Knuckle safely into an Amoongus, because if the Amoongus just stays in and goes for a Spore onto Urshifu, the game is essentially over. So playing it a little bit safe there. Uh, and now, you know, Urshifu does have multiple turns of max left. Uh, the Excadrill isn't really putting on very much offensive pressure in terms of damage, and you pressure a lot with, uh, you know, both attacks, both fighting and dark type attacks from the Urshifu. So I think what's really critical here is, are you able to maybe predict when the Amoongus or the Incineroar on Eriberto's end actually switches in? Because if you're able to capitalize off that and get a really powerful attack off, uh, that would be huge. The main problem, you know, for Javier is like, if you go for a Knuckle and Amoongus switches in, that resists, and then, you know, Tyranitar resists those dark type attacks. So Incineroar here, though, will be able to get a Intimidate off quickly against the Urshifu, meaning that it, you know, won't be doing as much damage. Yeah, that can be really big, especially when Heriberto is in a position where they really want to be able to knock out this Urshifu. Um, Javier actually goes ahead and brings Kingdra back in favor of this Clefairy, but here's the Max Knuckle, and it goes into the Incineroar. So Incineroar getting a lot of damage onto it, but the most important thing is that that Intimidate is now no longer a factor. But, ooh, Urshifu takes so much damage. Yeah, so a super power coming out there, but the Clefairy switch in means that Urshifu takes less damage because of its ability. Mm -hmm. So I think from Javier's perspective there, there are two potential plays you can go for. You can try to just stay in with Kingdra because you're not in much immediate threat of damage and try to just, you know, burn some more sleep turns. Or, you know, because the threat of super power is very real, switching to Clefairy means that the Urshifu will be able to survive. So... Now Incineroar is out, Incineroar doesn't really have any reason to go for a fake out into Clefairy because all of Clefairy's attacks pretty much have higher priority. So yeah, you'll want to basically switch out here uh, and maybe conserve another Intimidate. On Urshifu's end, you know, do you just go for another Max Knuckle into the Tyranitar slot or do you predict the Amoongus switch? And I think what's really scary right now is there's no really guaranteed safe play because of the threat of the Amoongus switching. Amoongus has oh. been a bit of a problem for Javier, but whoa, would you look at that. Uh, he goes for a potential... Um, goes for the G-Max again, the signature G-Max move, and that doesn't do quite enough damage to Tyranitar to be able to knock it out. So Tyranitar going to be able to get off yet another attack as we do see Incineroar go for the U-Turn, which does bring Amoongus back out onto the field. Yeah, critical uh, once again the not very effective attack goes into Tyranitar. Uh, Rock Slide comes out here, it doesn't do very much damage, but, you know, the main thing here is that uh, Barito has kind of weathered the storm of Gigantamax Urshifu. Urshifu really wants to be able to get multiple knockouts and multiple turns, especially because you can take advantage of the fact that your opponent can't really protect through your attack, so Tyranitar mm -hmm. in the end not eating up a single fighting type attack in the three turns let the Urshifu was out on the field, so you know, right now what's really tricky is that the Kingdra is still asleep in the back. Amoongus right now pretty much guaranteed to get a Spore off here. If, unless, you know, you can maybe knock out the Amoongus with something like a, uh, you know, Helping Hand Wicked Blow into the Amoongus. But uh, Ariberto can just cycle back the Incineroar in, so swap Tyranitar out, get another Intimidate, uh, and then go for a Spore on the Amoongus. So this is still pretty close, especially if Kingdra is able to wake up. But the main thing that's in Ariberto's favor is that he does have the weather control, which means that the Excadrill will mm -hmm. be able to outspeed everything in this late game. But I think it's really critical to maybe get one more Spore off here. If you're able to shut down the Clefairy, this game becomes a lot more difficult to win. Well, here's that switch. Gets another Intimidate off. So Javier's Urshifu is going to be at minus one now. And Clefairy just going to go ahead and use that follow me. Try to redirect away the Spore. Um, but here comes Urshifu. Just trying to secure a knockout. Oh. But Amoongus hangs on. Even with a critical hit. So the Spore goes off and it does connect with the Clefairy. Yeah, so critical, critical survival there. Of course, Urshifu's attack, signature attack, allows it to actually always get those critical hits. So uh, by going for that, the Intimidates actually really don't matter. So Clefairy potentially could have gone for, say, a helping hand there if it's carrying it, which is very, very common on it. If you pick up the knockout onto Amoongus and the Clefairy doesn't fall asleep, and then you can go for further redirection uh, later on. But... You know, Amoongus critically able to survive there, able to get the Spore off, and now Urshifu no longer has that, 
you know, protection of redirection from, from Clefairy. Of course, Kingdra is still sleeping in the back as well, and I think what Eriberto is kind of setting himself up for is basically an Excadrill endgame where he's able to get a lot of damage off. So he just wants to position Excadrill to a point where it can come out and be safe against everything and just click Earthquake. Yeah, that's one way to seal out the game, but you, you, have to get the, you have to get into the position to be able to do that first. So, unfortunately, the Spore to be able to shut down Urshifu is going to get negated by the Protect coming through from Javier's Urshifu, but the Sandstorm is over. Ariberto still has Tyranitar in the back, though. Exactly, so that'll allow him to at least cycle it back in once again. So Urshifu here, you know, able to get one big attack off before it faints. So uh, Clefairy takes another turn of sleep here. Oh, that's huge. Edelberto's been able to get multiple turns of sleep off, not only on Kingdra, but also this Clefairy. And Amukus goes down a bit of a champion for this match, just being able to get the land those spores and also that critical survival. Um, but Flare Blitz from this Incineroar is going to be enough to knock out Javier's Urshifu, and now it's up to these two sleeping Pokemon to wake back up. Yeah, so what's, you know, tricky here is that the Kingdra has taken a turn of sleep. You're switching in Tyranitar here, so if the Kingdra is actually able to wake up this turn and just get a Muddy Water off, I mean, that Muddy Water knocks out everything on Eriberto's end at this point, right? So if Kingdra is able to wake up this turn, that would be absolutely huge. Of course, right now, you could go for just an attack with Tarantra. I think protecting and maybe opting for a U-turn also could work. Um, but I think right now, Eriberto is basically hoping that the Kingdra does not wake up this turn. If Kingdra wakes up, it will get a Muddy Water off. Let's see, Clefairy is the first to wake up. It gets the Follow Me, but is Kingdra going to be able to wake up? Oh, it's not! No, it's not! Oh, that's actually huge! That means that Incineroar can go ahead and just, you know, do some chip damage to Clefairy with the U-turn. But most importantly, Tyranitar is going to get off a huge rock slide as long as those rocks don't miss. Yeah, exactly. And also, importantly, you get the Excadrill switch in for free. So now Excadrill in a position to just click Earthquake Rock Slide. Here it is. It's coming out. Is it able to connect both? It is. And that's just so much damage, even with the Friend Guard. I mean, you add the sand damage, and now Excadrill can just safely go for an Earthquake. And, you know, Kingdra with the Life Orb, with sand taking down as well, you might be able to survive the attack from Excadrill here. But, I, you know, even if you are... Do you have enough turns to actually pick up knockouts? Because Protect Earthquake here is just such a safe play from Excadrill. So mm -hmm. another critical turn of sleep once again there on the Kingdra. And Amoongus was just so big for Eriberto in this set. Absolutely. Amoongus did so much work. But we'll see if Kingdra is able to wake back up. I feel like that's kind of the big question. But actually, Excadrill is going to be able to move first because of its speed. So Earthquake coming out here. Does pick up the knockout on the Clefairy. And Kingdra holds on. Oh. Yeah, holds on, but even if it wakes up, and it is able to wake up, so oh, it does. gets that muddy water off, but I think with sand and life orb damage, it actually just faints after this turn, and mm -hmm. that's why you really want the rain up, you know, with Kingdra, you get that increased damage output, also don't take the residual from sand, so Excadrill's gonna faint, but with Incinera being able to switch back in, and yeah, life orb is gonna take care of Kingdra, that is going to be Eriberto taking this very first game in what was honestly a really, really intense matchup here. It ended up looking super close as well, but I, again, feel like the Amoongus from Eriberto just put out so much pressure in, in, in order to just shut down what Javier's game plan was for that game one. Uh, spores coming out, as, as well as just getting some critical survivals, it really sealed the deal for that game one. Yeah, I'm definitely thinking about the turn that the Urshifu wasn't able to knock out the Amoongus, and I think, once again, the Clefairy went for Follow Me there, fearing Tyranitar staying in and just going for yet another superpower, or, or, you know, mainly superpower into the Urshifu slot. By going for Follow Me, you make sure that the Urshifu at least survives, but if you knock out Amoongus there, you know, you keep around Clefairy for a little bit longer, uh, which, you know, provides value through further Follow Me's, and, I mean, the most important thing is just Kingdra, right? Kingdra wasn't able to do very much outside of that early game, and the very first turn of the game, Kingdra could have maybe opted for a muddy water but it opted for a protect instead and didn't even get targeted that turn so wasn't able to get any damage off uh, muddy water there most likely would have brought an excadrill down to its presumed focus ash uh, and then you know the excadrill was an immediate danger of just one more knockout and it's you can't really get the one hit ko on the opposing kingdra so i think what's really important for javier here is how do you actually play around the amoongus because by not bringing the venusaur or the magnezone there's really no way to stop the spores from coming right kingdra of course maybe it has that max airstream uh into the amoongus but uh, amoongus as you guys may have 
we've seen has that Koba Berry, so it's able to actually survive these really powerful max airstreams, even with helping hand support. And that's just a testament to Kingdra's, you know, space, space special attack, not very high. So I think Venusaur would be an excellent adjustment this time around, because not only do you put on pressure in terms of damage, you also don't get spored and you ignore the redirection from Amoongus, so you can safely target the Tyranitar and the Exodrill with your grass type attacks. Well, let's see whether or not Venusaur is the adjustment that Javier makes as we get into this game two of this incredible set for losers round 10. Heriberto and Javier are going to be showing us what Pokemon they've brought. And lo and behold, there is the Venusaur next to Clefairy for Javier. But Heriberto brings Amoongus and Excadrill. Yeah, so Venusaur comes out exactly the adjustment I think we were hoping to see from Heriberto or from Javier's end. So... You know, what's also tricky about playing against Venusaur is always the turn one call, right? Or if you're worried about a sleep powder, that could be super scary because, you know, Excadrill here might feel like, oh, I could just Dynamax go for an attack. But if you do so and the Venusaur goes for a sleep powder and it connects, that is super, super rough. So I think Venusaur in the first turn of the game often just puts on so much pressure because you have to play the guessing game. Does it uh, go for the sleep powder immediately or does it just go for the Gigantamax? Looks like Airberto is going to opt to play a little bit safe here. But now what he's at risk of is a potential, you know, Venusaur Gigantamax just going for the Vine Lash into Excadrill, uh, because that'll still do some damage, and then you have the residual damage as well, meaning that it's a lot harder for Excadrill to actually Dynamax by protecting on the first turn. Uh, Clefairy here, it could go for a Helping Hand, but I think uh, Protect is actually a really safe option here, because you want to avoid taking any potential damage from Excadrill. Also means that the Amoongus cannot spore you, ma making Amoongus pretty much useless on this first turn. Oh, I love that it's Gigantamax Venusaur as well. That's so exciting mm -hmm. to see uh, as Exodrill does go for the Protect. But as you mentioned, this could be really tricky to play around because Javier can just kind of go for a lot of offensive pressure with some of those max moves. Um, so here it comes. Excadrill takes so much damage through the Protect. That's a lot of damage, and you know, you compound the residual effect as well, it's gonna be a lot tougher. There's a Spore into the Clefairy as well, so I think Javier definitely getting the better end of the trade-off there. Heriberto probably hoping for, you know, scouting out for a Sleep Powder there, ends up, uh, you know, taking 40% of damage even through Protect. And once again, that's why these residual effects from Pokemon like G-Max, Venusaur, or Charizard can just be so strong. That's multiple turns mm -hmm. uh, of this residual effect, right? So Among Us now can just pretty safely go for a Spore onto the Clefairy Slot. What's just really tough is, what do you actually do with Excadrill? If you go for the Dynamax right now, you just take so much more damage from the Vine Lash and the Residual effect. So I don't think Heriberto wants to Dynamax the Excadrill here. You could consider just going for an Iron Head. Maybe you switch out into, say, Incineroar if you're worried about another Vine Lash going into that slot. From Javier's end, if you want to predict a potential switch out, if you don't expect the Excadrill to Dynamax, you could go for something like a Max Quake. Uh, you're even boosted by a Helping Hand because Clefairy's going to fall asleep here. And there's the Helping Hand to start things off. Helping hand just to be able to get a bit more damage, but oh, it's gonna be the uh, iron head into Clefairy just to get it super low. Uh, but here is a max quake, goes right into the Excadrill, and that is enough to be able to finish it off. And I think I feel like the important thing as well is just like we're seeing a lot of these defense boosts come through for Javier's side, and that's gonna be super helpful depending on what Herberto has in the back. So the Spore comes out once again, and Clefairy now will be asleep, guaranteed for the subsequent turn as well. But Heriberto has at least weathered the storm a little bit in terms of Dynamax. I think what makes this tricky is you can see that Tyranitar is his last Pokemon. You're not going to Dynamax the Amoongus, and I think Incineroar Dynamaxing <laughs> in a rain matchup doesn't feel very great as well. So you're pretty much relegated to Dynamaxing that Tyranitar in the late game. So the Incineroar switch out here makes sense. You don't want the Tyranitar to take any damage. Of course, there's the threat of residual damage from the G-Max Vine Lash. So by bringing in Incineroar, you at least put on some pressure. Uh, can maybe even opt for something like just a Flare Blitz right now into the Venusaur. Amoongus is really useless right now, other than maybe going for a Giga Drain onto Clefairy. Uh, of course, because Venusaur is able to bypass the Rage Powder uh, by you know being a grass type here. So yeah, I don't think Rage Powder actually accomplishes very much here. I think Giga Drain into Clefairy or switching out into Tyranitar are both maybe better options. Uh, and the Incineroar here can obviously just go for uh, either a Snarl or a Flare Blitz. I really think you want damage onto that Venusaur. So I think, you know, Flare Blitz is still able to chunk a fair amount away. Although, you know, uh, results in Incineroar taking a lot of recoil damage as well. From Venusaur's end though, you know, it's another guaranteed max move off and a max quake into Incineroar will be some super effective damage and won't care about this Rage Powder, which I don't think was really a great option on this turn because Clefairy's never gonna be attacking into Amoongus. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, this is going to be so much damage. Incineroar does uh, not take that super well because Ooh. of all of that extra damage and the critical hit on top of it. Ooh. Yeah, it's a big critical hit there. You can see how bulky Assault Vest uh, Incineroar is, though, right? Able to survive that even mm -hmm. after the critical hit. So very, very trained in special defense. Gets the Snarl off, but... You know, because it's a Solvest, it doesn't have a barrier to heal back up. After that critical hit, like, Venusaur, you know, might just be able to pick up a knockout onto that slot with an Earth Power now. And I think the Amoongus just does nothing right now. That Rage Powder last turn pretty much accomplished nothing, which is why I would have liked to see neither a Giga Drain into Clefairy or a Switch Out. Once again, Venusaur able to bypass those Rage Powders because of it being a Grass type, so doesn't really care about Amoongus right now. And that's why Venusaur, you know, was the adjustment that we wanted to see. So, you know, Flare Blitz into Venusaur now, but if Clefairy wakes up, uh, does stay asleep. And let's see if uh, this is able to actually knock out the Incineroar. Oh, it hangs on! Ooh, no, <laughs> it does hang on, but the Flare Blitz, after doing so much damage, there is the recoil that comes through, and Venusaur hangs on too! Oh, uh, this Venusaur able to take in, that is why Clefairy is, you know, such a great support Pokemon. The Spore goes into the Venusaur slot, so maybe predicting a potential switch out there, you cover for the option of Venusaur switching out. Mm -hmm. Flare Blitz Spore, I think, is a relatively safe play, so... It is now 4-2 in Javier's favor, but of course, Ariberto does not have, um, or Ariberto still has his Dynamax, right? So now Tyranitar can Dynamax go for a bunch of Max Rock Falls. I think what's tricky here, though, is the potential Polytrip Kingdra still in the back. What's going to be really important for Javier is basically to maintain weather control. One play that you can make here, for example, is switch Clefairy out into Politoed so that Venusaur doesn't faint from sand, and then go for a Sleep Powder onto Tyranitar. If the Sleep Powder connects, then, you know, it will be able to basically shut down the main Pokemon that wants to Dynamax. Of course, Amoongus could get around that by going for the Giga Drain onto the Venusaur slot, but as you saw, it's not the case for this turn. Here's that Politoed. Going to be able to reset the weather on the field, and now Javier is in firm control of the weather battle. Tyranitar does go for the Protect, though, so even though we are going to see Venusaur target down that slot with that Protect, it will keep Tyranitar safe for now. As Giga Drain comes through from Politoed, revealing that it does have one of those super effective berries, and Politoed able to be able to stay in this game for a little bit longer. Yeah, what's really critical here is that Venusaur sticks on the field for another turn as well, because now you know Tyranitar protected. If Sleep Powder connects on this next turn on Tyranitar, that will be an absolute disaster for Ariberto. So what's tricky here is, yeah, I mean, you want a Dynamax, right, to start doing damage. Uh, and I, I think at this point, maybe you try to bank off a Venusaur Sleep Powder miss and just KO the Politoed, because then you'll have weather control as well. And then it will be Tyranitar Amoongus versus Clefairy, which is still asleep, and presumably Kingdra on the back. So I think what's really critical here here is, is Venusaur able to connect onto the Tyranitar? Here we go! Oh, it's actually just going to be a Helping Hand instead, so not opting for the Sleep Powder. Tyranitar didn't Dynamax here, so once again, the Rage Powder is not protecting the Tyranitar from the Venusaur. If it's a Leaf Storm, that just might be a knockout. And there's a Leaf Storm! Yeah. Is it oh, enough for KO? KO? <laughs> it does. Oh, oh no. Ariberto not able to use the Dynamax for Tyranitar in this game. And now who is your offensive threat? Amoongus won't be able to get the job done versus the four Pokemon that Javier still has. And oh. I will... Yeah, that what what a game. Javier's adjustment for the Venusaur came in clutch. Yeah, that endgame was really intense. I mean, I think, it, like, if Tyranitar Dynamax is there and you knock out the, um, the Politoed and you pick up a double KO that turn, then, you know, there's maybe still a shot because Helping Hand Leaf Storm I don't think will KO there. It'll do a lot of damage and then it's contingent off, basically, if Kingdra's in the back hitting those Muddy Waters in the late game. Uh, of course, if the Clefairy also stays asleep for further, Amoongus can maybe go for Spores onto the Kingdra. So, uh, in the end, Ariberto made the decision to not Dynamax there and ends up, you know, just not even having a chance after the Helping Hand Leaf Storm. So, uh, you know, we saw Javier go for the Helping Hand Leaf Storm, just trying to opt for as much damage as possible. I think the idea behind that is, okay, even if you end up Dynamaxing, uh, I'm able to do so much damage that a Muddy Water from Kingdra in the end game maybe can just seal it up. So, I, I think Tyranitar Dynamaxing there would have been a lot closer, but I think at that point, maybe hoping for a miss or uh, baiting a Sleep Powder potentially out there. I would have liked to see Tyranitar Dynamax, I think, because by going down there, you just stand no shot at winning, and 
I, you know, this is why Dynamax is so critical and choosing one to Dynamax in this format is also very, very important. So I think the Venusaur adjustment is very, very good. And I think from Javier's end, you should probably stick with the Venusaur as the Pokemon to really go for the Gigantamax because uh, Kingdra in the late game can, you know, be a really, really good sweeper. Uh, as we saw in the last game, Kingdra didn't even go for the max or in that first game, but it also just fell asleep so quickly. So I guess the question is from... Uh, question is from Ariberto Zen, you know, what adjustments do you have to make? And the idea, I think, this time is to stall out the uh, Gigantamax from Venusaur, and you can do a bunch of things for that. I think, you know, if you lead Excadrill once again, you have to maybe go for some Max Quakes, but leading Excadrill is risky because, once again, if the Venusaur just sleep powders you, then that can be really tough. So instead, you can maybe play a little bit more passively, go with something like uh, Incineroar or Togekiss just to maybe stall out the first couple of turns. We saw how bulky this Assault Vest Incineroar is, even from a, you know, uh, critical hit Max Quake able to survive with around you know, one third of its held. So uh, Incineroar might be the answer uh, to kind of, once again, weather the storm or some critical switch outs, right? If you're able to mm -hmm. predict uh, the Venusaur going for a Vine Lash and you switch in the Incineroar, that's already one turn that you burn down. Uh, if you expect a Max Quake, you could maybe switch in a Moongus in Flat Slot if you don't need it. So it's all about playing defensively, I think, against the Venusaur in the first couple of turns. Uh, Ariberto was able to stall out the Gigantamax relatively successfully in that last game, but uh, just kind of fell behind too much and then didn't go for that Dynamax on Tyranitar. So in this third game, I think, yeah, don't need the Excadrill or if you do, you know, go for Max Quicks immediately if you're predicting the Venusaur to just Max and not Sleep Powder you. Well, let's find out as we get into the game three, the conclusion in this series between Eriberto and Javier. And we mentioned that Venusaur was the linchpin of Javier's success in that second game. And take a look at Eriberto's adjustment, bringing in Cineroar and bringing Amoongus to start it off. Yeah, so once again, you know, the Venusaur puts on Sleep Powder pressure. Now you've got Incineroar, which is a really bulky Pokemon that can take these attacks well. I think you see Airberto going for the Spore into Clefairy, pretty much no other attack to really even try to go for, I think. So it makes a lot of sense here. Uh, and I think on the Incineroar's end, I mean, you can go for a Fake Out onto Venusaur if you're worried about a Sleep Powder, but you, know, you can also just opt for a Snarl to decrease the special attack. I think the Snarl actually makes a lot of sense because, you know, if Sleep Powder misses, for example, or Venusaur maxes, uh, then shutting down Venusaur with Snarl is great. Venusaur opts not to max, so it's going to be the Sleep Powder and it's going to connect on the Incineroar. Mm, that is a, a bit of a pickle for Eriberto to be in because you you obviously want to be able to get work done with the Incineroar, um, but a Spore fires out into the protected Clefairy. So this seems like a better turn for Javier if you just look at it from just the start of the game. Yeah, I think what's tricky, though, for Javier's end is, like, you know, do you can, you know, max the Venusaur immediately because you know the Incineroar has Snarl. Like, as soon as the... Uh, Venusaur maxes. If Incineroar is able to get a quick wake up and gets a single star off, that's so critical in making it do so much less damage, right? So Venusaur mm -hmm. is going to commit the max this turn, and you know, Spore into Clefairy is pretty much a guaranteed play once again because we saw the protect last turn. So I think Clefairy once again probably just wants to opt for something like a Helping Hand. You can go for a Helping Hand Max Quake into the Incineroar uh, or a Max Ooze if you want to, you know, increase that special attack before the star comes out. Yeah, there's the helping hand coming through just to give Venusaur a little bit of extra help as it is the max ooze to boost that special attack. Um, and I, this is all a great turn for Ariberto just being able to deny one of these turns of Gigantamax coming through from Venusaur, not securing a knockout. Yeah, and Cineroar critically stays asleep for another turn, so not able to get any attacks off. You know, Snarl there could be a really big deal, because if you wake up there and you're able to basically force Venusaur to spend three turns to knock out Incineroar, then you've essentially traded an Incineroar for a Gigantamax Venusaur, which I mm -hmm. think is, you know, a really, really good trade-off here. So, uh, unable to wake up. Now, my big question is whether a Max Quake can actually knock out, because I believe that last critical hit Max Quake did, like, 134 damage, and now you have the special attack boost, so it's essentially the same damage output from a crit. So, let's see, Max Quake coming out into Incineroar, is it able to pick up the knockout? Oh, oh it is! It is. It wow, is able to pick that... up the knockout, and it's another crit it's out to the Incineroar! What? Oh! Uh, yeah, there's, you know, there's a chance Incineroar... There. Yeah, there's a chance the Incineroar could have hung on from there based on the damage output from that previous critical hit. So, uh, you know, goes down immediately, doesn't even have the chance of waking up, and you've also got that special attack boost on Venusaur now. So what makes this so tricky is just having that last turn of Gigantamax from the 
Venusaur. You know, Venusaur often wants to go for that Vine Lash on the last turn, so if Incineroar hangs on there, I think most likely Javier would spend that last turn of Gigantamax Vine Lashing the uh, Incineroar to pick up a knockout, and then you get a free switch and into Tyranitar or Exidrol. What makes this really tricky now is that the Clefairy can just switch out an Apolitoad, change the weather, and then you can just go for a Vine Lash onto Tyranitar this turn. If you expect Tyranitar to protect, then, and you're worried about, you know, uh, activating weakness policy, you could of course go for a Vine Lash onto Venusaur, get that residual effect off. Maybe don't switch out Clefairy this turn. Uh, you could consider switching out here if you're confident in knocking out Tyranitar, but Tyranitar is a really bulky Pokemon, so I think you have to respect the threat of it Dynamaxing and going for a Rockfall. So, looks like Javier is going to offer the ladder, is not going to go for the switch on an Apolitoad. And Tyranitar protects. Let's see who Venusaur or targets. Very interesting predicament to be in. Well, here comes the G-Max Vine Lash, and it is going to be a Moongus that actually takes this one, so not the Tyranitar. Calling that protect correctly as the yep, Spore comes through, just in case Clefairy did wake up, but it's still asleep. <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, covering the option of Clefairy switching out and, you know, Javier actually staying in and not going for, uh, or not waking up there actually ends up benefiting him because now, you know, mm -hmm. uh, Clefairy will be able to wake up relatively safely. So what's really tricky now for Ariberto is that Javier can just switch the Clefairy into Politoed and go for a Leaf Storm onto Tyranitar. You've got that increased stage of special attack from that Max Ooze as well. That honestly might just be enough to knock out Tyranitar, and even if not, I'm thinking after the residual damage from G-Max Vine Lash, it's enough. So... If you're able to knock out Tyranitar, especially because Tyranitar looks like it is going to commit the max here, then you'll have weather control in the late game, and if Kingdra's in the back, Kingdra fares pretty well against the Moongus and Excadrill, so there's the switch in a Politoed. I mean, if Leaf Storm just hits the Tyranitar here, might just be enough for a knockout. Let's see. Ooh, well, Tyranitar will actually go ahead and Dynamax this game, and, and I think this is a really great play from Ariberto just because if you are able to get a knockout, especially onto that Politoed, um, I, I think that ends up putting Ariberto in a really, really good position. But let's find out exactly what's oh, going to happen. Oh, there's the Leaf Storm! The leaf oh, storm it, misses. And it misses! It misses! That's huge! Oh my goodness, that is such a critical miss because even if you don't knock out the Tyranitar, you do so much damage that I think after two Vine Lash... Uh, residual effects you pick up the knockout so now not only do you get no damage onto tyranitar you also knock out the venusaur completely and you get weather back in your favor and the spore on the polytoad that's oh, a disastrous no. miss from javier's end and oh man such a critical critical miss there i think uh Ariberto, you know because of that critical hit on the incineroar uh early fell into a pretty big hole because the venusaur was able to you know go for just a really powerful Vine Lash uh, and, you know, get the residual damage started. Uh, that Max Ooze earlier on Slavinus Venus are also really critical, but yeah, miss there means Saranifer is able to hang on. Now, how do you actually do enough damage on Javier's end, right? You've got a sleeping Polytoad. Clefairy is going to wake up soon, but that doesn't do anything. So it's all about Kingdra, but Kingdra has to weather the storm of Amoongus and Tyranitar. So sure, you can bring Kingdra out, but a Muddy Water is just going to activate the weakness policy on that Tyranitar. So you, you maybe have to like bring the Kingdra out, switch the Polytoad back out into Clefairy, and then you know switch back in it's actually clefairy coming out here which means that javier's end of this uh you know his end is just so passive right now so i think if you have that kingdra in the back i would have liked to see kingdra out uh instead because then you can pivot polytoid into clefairy and then switch back out and then go for a money water and maybe that's enough to knock out tyranitar with rain being up so you know that was just such a critical miss there tyranitar able to pick up a knockout on you know the biggest threat also able to change the weather and you get the free sport into polytoid pretty much a disaster yeah, this is huge. Oh my goodness. Oh, what a turn of effect for both of these players where Javier kind of looked like they were in the driver's seat because of how much work that Venusaur was getting done. But then that miss of the Leaf Storm and Roberto is just in a much better position now as we're going to see the switch out here into Kingdra as the last bit of offensive pressure that Javier has on this team. And even with the follow me, we'll we'll see whether or not the switch in actually ends up being free. As here comes Max Rockfall. Clefairy oh, does hang on though. But not after this Giga Drain comes through. Yeah, able to hang on there. And uh, like you mentioned, the Giga Drain actually finishes it off. So Ariberto actually going for the Giga Drain instead of Spore. Uh, Spore would have made things actually a little bit more awkward because you put Clefairy to sleep, but then, you know, you can switch out the Clefairy into Poly to the subsequent turn. So I think Javier's game plan there was basically to get a guaranteed free switch in into the King Draw that was relatively safe, which is why he opted to switch uh, the Clefairy in, knew that Clefairy was going to, you know, be able to wake up. So 
Now at least you have Reyna, but it's Kingdra. Like, if Tyranitar didn't have Dynamax, you know, this would be a different story. But the reality is that Tyranitar still has one more turn of max. Uh, and, you know, can you actually knock out the Amoongus? Also, can Muddy Water actually knock out the Tyranitar here? Uh, Tyranitar is just such a bulky Pokemon. Even with Rain and Life War, I'm thinking I can actually survive a Muddy Water here and just get a, you know, Rock Fall off. If you're worried about the Muddy Water knocking you out on Aeroberto's end, you can go for a Max Guard and just Spore the Kingdra. But, of course, one mm -hmm. thing you have to respect is the potential uh, Muddy Water getting an Accuracy Drop onto Amoongus or a Hurricane, you know, uh, landing a Confusion onto the Amoongus if you predict the Tyranitar to Max Guard. So, the big question here is, you know, if the Muddy water comes out is it able to actually pick up the knockout against tyranitar if not that pretty much will be the game but looks like kingdra is actually going to opt for a max here to stall out you know uh tyranitar's dynamax but what makes this tricky is that the tyranitar going for the rock fall can just reset the weather now you don't have that increased damage output and tyranitar gets the sand up polytoad's uh gonna be asleep as well so that is going to be a bit of a problem for javier as uh, the Max Rockfall does go for Kingdra, who did protect, and even that you're getting a little bit of damage up, the most important thing is that the Sandstorm is back on the field. Yeah, exactly. Sandstorm basically setting it up for the Excadrill endgame now. That's why it was so critical to knock out Tyranitar, especially once Max, because Max Tyranitar able to control the weather a lot more through Max Rockfalls in every turn, making it a lot harder for you to actually consistently get rain up on Javier's end. So now, you know, we know Kingdra took its... Uh, protect. So I think now Polytoad, if it's able to wake up, you probably want to go for something like a Helping Hand and a Muddy Water. But I, what's just really tricky is now Javier does not have weather control unless the Polytoad actually has Rain Dance. So let's see. No uh, poly, uh, Helping Hand from the Polytoad. So it's just going to be Muddy Water. And oh, it's not able to knock out Tyranitar. No, that's a huge for Roberto. Uh, you do get that little bit of an accuracy drop there, but the weakness policy comes through, and that's going to do so much damage to the Pokemon that Javier has left. Oh. Oh, well, here Rock's comes Rockslide. Rockslide comes out, Polytoad stays asleep. Oh. There's one miss, there's two misses! There's two misses! The accuracy drop actually mattered there! <sighs> Ugh, I mean, I, I still think it's just so hard to claw out of this one because now Amoongus gets the Spore off against the Kingdra, right? So Kingdra's really your main means of offense. If Politoed has, uh, you know, a spread water type attack, like its own Surf, you can maybe knock out the Tyranitar. Uh, otherwise, what's really tricky now is, once again, there's still the Excadrill waiting in the back. You've got the Weakness Policy activated on Tyranitar. Kingdra guarantee takes a turn to sleep here, so you don't have to worry about that at all. So even if Politoed wakes up, you know, uh, this Rage Powder will redirect any single target attacks, whether it be like a Scald uh, or, you know, another attack off. And if the Rock Side connects this time around, that should just be the game. Okay, Polydot wakes up. It's going to be Ice Beam. Yeah, so uh, Amoongus is going to redirect that away and uh, still does, is able to hang on. But the Rock Slide connects to both Pokemon. Kingdra gets knocked out here. And when Kingdra going down, I think that should basically seal up the game. Polito didn't end up waking up last turn, but I think Javier could have maybe tried to go for the Helping Hand Muddy Water, at least pick up the Knockout onto Tyranitar, and then you have Polito Kingdra relatively healthy against Amoongus and Excadrill, but this Amoongus just put in so much work, right? The Venusaur was able yeah. to at least make, you know, not be able to get Spore, but... I, there's no great damage output from the opposing side into Amoongus, other than, once again, a potential Hurricane from Kingdra, but with the Cobaberry that we've seen on the Amoongus, it's just so difficult to actually knock it out. So I think 